exactly is the nature of this dispute among family members? Is it about property? Is it about filial piety, namely following or not the father's will? Or is it really a power struggle? Let's go to Mr. O first. Well, I think it's primarily the differences in opinion as to how the late Mr. Lee Kuan Yew's uh, heritage, his uh, name and his reputation should be remembered by future Singaporeans. The two younger siblings, I think they would like to so-called honor the, Mr. Lee's, uh, the late Mr. Lee's uh, wishes to, be, uh, to have the house uh, demolished so that because Mr. Lee had a problem with uh, you know, like for example, be memorialized uh, as uh, somebody great, and then uh, he, has, he has this uh, disbelief in uh, in memory such as this. Mm. Whereas I think the Singaporean government they might want to do something else. So there, there are differences in in opinion in this case. Yeah. Prime Minister Lee, Mr. Young, in fact, committed to what his father asked, which is to demolish the house, yeah. and he even went public nineteen in the year 2015 about that but oh, yeah. eventually even though he claimed that he did not involve at all at the government's decision about what to do with the house mm -hmm. um, yet the house is still there oh yeah so the other siblings seem to ask him mm -hmm. what is the father's wish yeah. and whether you really follow the father's wish what do you think is at the most critical nature of this whole issue well, I think on the surface is the disputes uh, uh, about uh, the way to uh, set, settle the uh, old property. Mm. But uh, the nature of the disputes uh, uh, reflects the totally different uh, opinions of uh, politics. And uh, for the prime minister, the, the eldest son, uh, he, uh, his idea about uh, the arrangement reflects uh, his wish to uh, uh, prolong Li Guang Yao's value, but the other uh, so side. So called to maintain the legacy. Oh yes. Even by the property of a house. Oh yes, uh, but uh, uh, his uh, argument is there have been seven documents uh, reflecting uh, Li Guang Yao's real uh, intention about mm. the old house, but unfortunately different uh, documents uh, reflect a different uh, idea of Li Guangyu. So that is the key points for the disputes. And, the other, and the, his younger uh, sister and uh, uh, as, uh, brother uh, has the opposite idea. They also take the argument and say the value lies in the no uh, personnel uh, legacy. So demolish the house uh, reflects mm -hmm. the true intention of his father. So, the, so in the nature, the different uh, uh, political beliefs uh, appeared uh, between the brother and the sisters. That's very interesting. The reason we are focusing on this family dispute, apparently, yep. is because this family, from father now to the son, has been running this country for decades. Yep. And it seems there is a continuity of legacy from the father to the son. But the question is, Dr. O, should it be? Well, I, I think, uh, of course, uh, the Singaporean official side would, would argue that, uh, you know, it, it, the, the fact that uh, the, both uh, prime ministers, uh, you know, with Mr. Lee, with uh, Mr. Go in between, that, uh, well, it's the nature of uh, their meritocratic uh, practices. Um, and I think there are still some substantial differences in the uh, governance style uh, be between uh, the senior Mr. Lee and the junior Mr. Lee. For yeah. example, I think d during uh, nowadays, uh, uh, junior Mr. Lee, he approaches uh, issues uh, much more responsively. Huh? For example, if there are various uh, concerns uh, from the people regarding the, the livelihoods and so on, the government will be very fast to, to, to respond to that. That is in contrast to in previous years, it's more about building the greater Singapore rather than focusing on the livelihood of the regular Singaporeans. So there are differences. The continuity, of course, lies in the fact that it's the same party mm. which has uh, ruled Singapore for many years here. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yang, from your observation, how much is the legacy 
of the father, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, been providing to now the political legitimacy and possible future legacy of the current Prime Minister Lee? Uh, obviously, in my observation, uh, the current Prime Minister Li uh, ha has enjoyed greatly the legacy left uh, uh, by his father, not only uh, himself, but also in the total political system in uh, Singapore mm. uh, has, uh, has such a characteristics, say, the traditional uh, legacy benefits uh, the successors in many areas, and also the uh, dominance for the political elites uh, dominates uh, uh, almost every key sectors and er areas mm -hmm. in this country, even up to today. So the current disputes actually touch on the very cr critical question whether or not uh, the Singapore as a country or uh, the society should continue the tradition, say the elites dominant and the rules the society and the elites come from the elites successors and the generation the generation from the uh, the elites so right. that is the key question facing the Singapore society this is a key question because uh, Dr. Oh, as you may remember very well, there have been a lot of debates about the so-called uh, democracy Singaporean style or governance Singaporean style. Uh, some consider that as one of the greatest examples of oriental invention. Others consider it not necessarily exactly so. What do you make of it given this apparent dispute going on inside a political family? Dr. O. Well, Sing Singapore, I think it's an evolving uh, democracy. In olden days, uh, indeed, uh, you wouldn't even see, uh, I mean, you, you wouldn't even see real contests in elections uh, during most of uh, Mr. Lee Sr.'s time. Yeah? The opposition candidates simply wouldn't even come out to run. Nowadays, you see uh, competition in each and every parliamentary uh, seat. And uh, in the last, uh, last well, the, the round before last round of uh, election, you see uh, the opposition make, making a lot of headways and, and so on. I think Singaporeans are still adjusting to a, to a Singapore without uh, the senior Mr. Lee, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. Mm -hmm. And in the process, uh, sometimes when you have uh, you know, very advanced uh, technology, when you have a very advanced communication technology, people take to uh, the internet. I mean, as we as is the case uh, with uh, the two uh, younger siblings of uh, the prime minister, mm. people nowadays they like to make the case publicly. You see, you see the similar kind of airing of uh, you know, family disputes uh, in the public in places such as Hong Kong, for example. Mm. Uh, you know, over the legacy of a late father and, and, and so on. So I'm, I'm not actually very uh, surprised uh, to, to see this uh, happening. I see it as a, a sign of an evolving uh, democracy in mm. Singapore. Yeah. It's very interesting you talk about this uh, generational differences. And yet, Mr. Yang, there have been others who pointed out that for Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, his generation, it was the generation of political strongmen oh, yeah. in Singapore, in China, for example, Mr. Deng Xiaoping, oh, yeah. and also in some of the other countries in Asia and the Pacific region. Yeah, regions. that is the age of a strongman. It is indeed. And now when you see politics these days mm -hmm. in the world, some have also mentioned this is also a generation of strongman politics. If you look at Russia, if you look at Turkey, some would say, but whether that is also true in the Asia Pacific region, that of course is a big question mark. Dr. O earlier mentioned there have been some evolvement of governance style oh, in yes. Singapore, for example. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that issue? Well, uh, yes, I, I uh, fully agree with the assessment to say uh, there have been an evolution in Singapore style. If we talk about, you mentioned that Singaporean style of governance. But the, the style now, it has been different from the style then, yes. decades ago in Singapore. So that reflects the evolution uh, in Singapore. But the key question is where to evolve towards. Mm -hmm. And uh, the current disputes about the old house really, uh, at least uh, partly, reflects the different ideas and the ideologies uh, about the evolution. Evolution, no one opposed 
that, mm -hmm. and that's an inevitable trend. But how to evolve? Which direction we should evolve? For example, we talk about the legacy. So, so what kind of legacy? Yeah, are what we kind talking of legacy? About? And the legacy, even uh, that is the same legacy. What kind of role the legacy should continue to play? Mm. Play as the role decades ago, or play something new? That's mm. a key question facing the total society. Of Very Singapore. interesting question over there, certainly going beyond even Singaporean borders. Dr. Oh, your opinion about that mm. evolvement? Well, I think, for example, the, for the late uh, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew, the, he would like to leave a legacy in the sense of uh, his policy being uh, continued. I mean, some of his more successful policies, such as uh, public housing for many Singaporeans, uh, mm. such as uh, Singapore's national service programs and so on, he, I, I think he would see those things as his uh, uh, legacy. But uh, even then, uh, even those things, uh, there are Singaporeans who have uh, different opinions. And uh, I think the government uh, it, is not uh, blind to that. I think they see that. That's why they, from time to time, they will set up various panels to try right. to see how to uh, uh, fine tune some of these uh, programs. But sometimes if the fine tunement is, uh, is fast enough, then of course you will regain support. If it's not fast enough, then of course you lose support. That's but that's true. the nature of democracy here. Yeah. That's the nature of governance as a whole, I guess. Uh, it's very yeah. different. One's the interpretation of democracy from the others, uh, definitely in today's right. world. Uh, Mr. Yang, this is only one part of the issue. Oh, yeah. The other part of the issue is as this uh, apparent family dispute mm -hmm. evolves on the international stage, we yeah. see also Singapore struggles mm -hmm. to find its own identity, oh, yes. both in the region and also in the international community. It used to serve, if I remember right, mm -hmm. as a bridge between, let's just say, the East and the West, even oh, yeah. between China and the United States. Yeah. The uh, Shangri-La Dialogue, for example, is a yeah, great yeah, yeah. demonstration of the Singapore's aspiration of becoming this bridge. But mm -hmm. things have changed. China oh, yeah. changed, US changed. China, US want to very much willingly talk to one another because they see the significance of it. So yeah. Singapore, economically, politically, geopolitically, yep. where is its future identity? I think that's another big chunk of huge questions facing Singapore today. Yeah, actually, uh, Singapore identity uh, itself has been in the course of evolution. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning stage, uh, they calculated, uh, they, calculate, uh, they, calculate, uh, they uh, developed their uh, identity uh, with their very successful economic construction. Right. And uh, with their increasing of uh, international debt quo, their status and uh, the uh, uh, identity is facing challenges. And Li Guang Yu made a very good contribution to strengthen the identity. Right. But now, with the uh, evolution of the course, the, uh, the, the traditional identity lose their advantage, and a new advantage yet mm. to come. So that is a challenge facing the, uh, I see. the Singapore. And before we go, we have very briefly, 30 seconds for you as well, Dr. O. What about that, that sp specific identity? Well, I, I think uh, Mr. Lee gave some hints uh, during his uh, response statement uh, last night. Mm. He said Singapore are facing the economic challenges as well as security threats. And I think in the years and months to come, those will remain Singapore's uh, main challenges as it tries to uh, shape its uh, new identity.